Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this very special Discover ASEA, where we are going to discuss uh, in more detail the science behind the ASEA Redox technology. Now, we have a very, very special guest joining us on the call tonight. Uh, Hunter Dean is the Vice President of Production Operations. Uh, he's got a lot of jobs in ASEA. He oversees research and development, uh, university research, product development, quality assurance, manufacturing and production of the ASEA products. And uh, Hunter has been with ASEA for four years. Uh, before ASEA, his background is in chemical engineering and he was working in the oil and gas industry. So Hunter, really, really uh, appreciative of you giving us some time tonight to share this important presentation. So at this point, uh, I'm just gonna hand the call right over to you. Great, thanks so much for having me on the call, Alan. Um, Any time that I have an opportunity to talk about science and redox and redox chemistry, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for me. I get really excited about it. Um, so guys, we have a, a great presentation for you tonight. We're gonna talk about um, some redox science. We're gonna talk about um, some principles that you guys can take away, some simple concepts and keywords that we want you guys to focus on. Um, we recognize that our product is pretty unique um, and that we operate um, at the forefront of redox technology. And so at times it can be difficult to try and explain the product and its benefits. Um, and so we're gonna dive into the science tonight. We're gonna go deeper than you need to be responsible for knowing, please know that. Um, we want you to focus on the keywords and I'll, I'll point those out as we move along. Um, but first I wanna talk about the Redox Center and some of the things that we do. Alan um, had mentioned some of my roles. Um, some of that is production and quality assurance. So I wanna go into that first to kind of provide um, a background as what we do um, to produce the products and supply the global demand. So our Redox Center is uh, 63,000 square feet. Um, it's in Pleasant Grove, Utah. And last year, we produced nearly 4 million bottles of ASEA and nearly a million tubes of Renew. Now, we have a robust quality program in ASEA and our products we hold at the highest level of quality. And so every single moment that we are manufacturing products, we have quality technicians out on the line doing visual inspections. Um, so last year, we inspected nearly 130,000 bottles by hand of ASEA and nearly 27,000 tubes of Renew. Now, in addition to those quality checks while we're manufacturing on the line, we retain samples of every single lot that we manufacture of all of our products. And so internal testing is something that we hold um, paramount. And so we will test several times each lot that we manufacture. And so in our internal labs, we tested nearly 5,000 bottles of ASEA, nearly 3,000 tubes of Renew, and almost 400 tubes of the Redox Serum. Now, in addition to the internal tests that we perform, we send our products out for third-party testing. And what that does is we get a number internally and we get a number from the third-party test and we compare them to make sure that our numbers and their numbers are accurate. So every single lot of product that is coming out of our building is tested multiple times before it is shipped and distributed around the globe. Our new partners in um, our third-party testing are BQC, Redux Technologies out of Spain, and GLU Labs out of Germany. We do a lot of testing internally. Um, these are a list of a few, um, this isn't comprehensive by any means, of some of the important tests that we perform internally. Um, we know that redox signaling molecules are high energy molecules because they're high energy. They're very reactive, right? Some of the, some of the, or the, the magic behind the product is the stability of the signaling molecules. Um, and so some of these tests are important to playing that dance of stability for the signaling molecules. And so every one of these tests is performed multiple times per lot to make sure that the product is going to be effective and stable before we ship it out our doors. In addition to our testing, we have a variety, a, a wide plethora of um, certifications that we hold. Um, we are an FDA listed facility. Um, we actually had an audit last year. Um, the 
auditor came in um, and, and to give you guys an idea of the, the depth uh, of, of an FDA audit, there are over 2000 points of inspection um, and each one of those points has sub points. So it's very, very in depth. They are gonna cover manufacturing practice, equipment maintenance, um, document control, document keeping, recall statuses. They're, they're going to go into um, just about every aspect of manufacturing and quality assurance. Um, one of the things that um, was really impressive was is, is that there was nothing but stellar reviews from the auditor. Um, she said, and, and she said, I probably shouldn't say this, but you guys should teach audit readiness. Um, and so that was something we were really proud about was is even the auditor um, was telling us, hey, this is truly sensational. This is in, in, incredibly well done. Um, high quality manufacturing, high quality assurance, um, and, and had nothing but positive things to say for us So in, in, in over 2000 points of inspection. So that's something we really pride ourselves on. Now, because of our product classification in certain markets, we don't always fall under the FDA. Um, and so we have a company come in and audit us annually uh, called the NSF, and they're gonna hold us to similar GMP standards that the FDA does. Uh, we actually just completed the NSF audit two weeks ago. Um, and for several years consecutively now, we have maintained an A grade with the NSF. So we pride ourselves on that as well. Now, in addition to the NSF certification, we have an NSF GMP sport certification. This is gonna be important for any of you who have um, athletes in your organization. What this certification um, tells us is that we do not use any banned or prohibited substances um, in our manufacturing plan. In addition to the NSF sports certification, we have tested the cell performance line, mind, mood, and energy to be WADA compliant. So what that means is the first lot that we manufactured, we sent it off to be tested for um, pro prohibited compounds according to the World Anti-Doping Agency. Um, and all three of those products were found compliant and free of any prohibited or banned substance. So for the cell performance line, you have the WADA testing. And then for the product like um, a CIA Redox supplement, or Renew 28, any of the cell signaling products, you have the NSF GMP sport certification. And those both protect the athletes in your organization and help them know that they can take our products freely without concerns of um, violation of doping rules and regulations. In addition to those, uh, we have a certificate of free sale and sanitation inspection. What this allows us to do is export our product. Um, then we have the agricultural and food certification. This allows us to manufacture um, products in the state of Utah. And then for Renew 28 and Renew Advanced, we have a cosmetic certification, the ISO 22716 certification. This again is looking at our manufacturing practices. This is making sure that we are um, up to par on our GMP compliance. So GMP stands for good manufacturing practices. Um, and so you guys can start to see, we go through several audits every single year that are looking at our manufacturing practices, that are looking at our documentation, that are looking at uh, our quality procedures. Um, and, and, and we continually impress auditors and we continually receive high marks um, across the board. In addition to these certifications, we are kosher and halal certified. Okay, so this is where we dive into the, the science portion of the presentation. Um, this is where the magic happens. This picture is of the reactors here at the plant uh, in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Uh, and those small tanks up front is where the signaling molecules are made. They're then transferred to that middle tank where a pH balance occurs and then a dilution in that last tank. When we talk about one lot or one batch of ASEA, that's one of those large tanks, 4,000 gallons uh, of product. And that's that's nearly 15,000 bottles or so of ASEA. Um, and so we're, we're pumping a lot of product out the door to make sure that we're meeting uh, global demand in all 33 uh, national markets at the time of this. So I wanna kind of give you guys a primer here. Um, when I talked about diving into the science and you being responsible for certain keywords and concepts, 
These are those five concepts that if you take nothing else away from this presentation, but these five concepts, you guys have done your job. Okay, so I'm going to run through kind of the, the 30 second elevator pitch utilizing these words on on how a SIA works. And that goes cell signaling molecules that are found in Renew28 and a SIA redox supplement. These cell signaling molecules are tiny molecules. And because they are tiny, they are absorbed directly into the cell. Once they're absorbed into the cell, they act as an on off switch to begin cell signaling. That cell that is switched on signals to the cells around it, and those cells signal to the cells around them. This begins a cascade or a domino effect, and this cascade or domino effect contributes to our resilience to stress and overall wellness. Okay, we'll go over that several times during this presentation so you guys can get a good feel for it, but those are the important keywords and concepts that you can use to talk about and discuss these amazing products um, that are really unique in the marketplace. Now, before we go any further, I really wanna make sure that we understand what redox is. What is the field of redox chemistry? Redox is a simple abbreviation for reduction and oxidation, okay? So when we say redox, we're, we're talking reduction, oxidation. And there's this quote here that I really love, and the simplicity of it is, is, is great, but it is really profound as we, as we move through these concepts. It says, life is nothing but electrons looking for a place to rest. So remember that as we move through this, electrons looking for a place to rest. Let's define an electron really quickly. I know it's been a while since high school chemistry or college chemistry. So um, an electron is a very small negatively charged particle. It cannot be broken down into anything smaller and it moves near the speed of light. Tons of energy associated with these electrons. An electron transfer is the process of an electron being transferred or moving from one atom or molecule to another, okay? And when we think about electrons, I get, I want you guys to think about this concept of a ball on top of a hill. Now, if I push that ball, just give it a little nudge, what happens? Well, it rolls down the hill. And then I'll ask, okay, well, why? And then people will start to say, okay, gravity, um, inertia, these concepts. And really what it comes down to is energy. There's a theme here, energy, you guys will see this, is that the ball has more potential energy at the top of the hill than it does at the bottom. And everything in the universe, if it has an opportunity to exist at a lower energy state, it will do so. So the ball, once given the opportunity, will shift from a high energy state to a low energy state. Okay. So now with that in mind, let's switch back to redox. First off, oxidation is lose. Reduction is gain. We use oil rig, O-I-L-R-I-G in chemistry, oxidation is lose, reduction is gain. Now, the question is, if we think about through the context of the ball on top of the hill, why does this electron transfer from one atom to the other? Well, it's because it's going from a high to a low energy state. And so this transfer of electrons occurs whenever there is a difference in energy. And so the electron transfers from a high to a low energy state. That ball or the electron rolls down the hill. Now, this electron transfer happens in our bodies all the time, in between cells. Everything that's going on in our body is this transfer. And there's a balance associated with this. We've heard um, in the industry a lot about antioxidants or reductants. That's kind of become a buzzword for a lot of health gurus. But what they're missing in the picture and what ASEA does so well is there is a balance associated with redox chemistry. It's not all reduction. There is oxidation. There's oxidative stress. There's response to oxidative stress. And ASEA allows you to respond to that stress. We talk about resilience to stress. And so what happens is, is if I'm on one side of the um, seesaw here that we see, because I'm out of balance, I've got oxidative stress. Redox chemistry allows me to shift back into center. And then I'm knocked off again and I have to respond. ASEA improves our ability to respond to stress and recenter ourselves. 
achieving redox homeostasis. Okay, so we're going deep here. This is how signaling molecules are made. So at the bottom of this graph, you guys will see sodium chloride, NaCl, and that dissolves rolling down the hill to make saline. We take high purity salt, high purity water, and we mix them to make a high purity saline. Now, my question to you guys is, why does salt dissolve in water? Well, that's because salt as a solid in water is higher energy than salt dissolved in water. So when you add salt to water, it wants to dissolve because those electrons are looking for a place to rest, right? Now, when we have the saline, we don't want to create a product that um, is the same as sodium chloride, right? That energy difference is used as energy to create a signal in your cells. So we need to create molecules that have enough energy that can be used as a signal within your cells. And so what we do is instead of using electrolysis to make salt again, we're using electrolysis. And instead of going up a small hill back to sodium chloride, we push that ball up a bigger, larger, different hill to create different species of molecules higher in energy. Now on the left side of the graph, you'll see two lines. First, energy, which the signaling molecules are at higher energy or redox potential. Now, in the field of redox chemistry, we use redox potential to talk about energy of molecules. So when we say we power potential, we're not just meaning the potential of the individuals in the business. We literally mean the redox potential or energy associated with signaling molecules and cell signaling, okay? So it's that energy difference, that energy we're putting back into the molecules that is utilized by the cells to create cell signaling. Now, one of the other key words is absorption, right? Because cell signaling molecules are tiny, they are absorbed directly into the cell. So I've, I've asked the question to a lot of associates and I've heard answers as high as five minutes as to um, how long they hold a CIA in their mouth before they swallow it. We've done some tests recently here at the Redox Center, and we've confirmed that the majority of the absorption happens between 15 and 30 seconds. So if you're doing it longer than that, we applaud your ambition, um, but 15 to 30 seconds is, is sufficient, and then you swallow it, and then it, it continues to be absorbed from that point. Now, when we, when we talk absorbed, right, what do we mean by that? So here we have a, a, a much magnified, a, a very, very high magnification of, of a cell membrane. Um, this is the kind of the, the wall or the protection of the cell. This is what determines what goes in and out. Now, these cells are, the, excuse me, these, uh, these signaling molecules are so tiny that they are able to freely pass through the cell membrane inside of the cell. And so they are literally absorbed from outside to inside of the cell. So when we say absorbed, that's what we mean. And that's why it's important to know that these are tiny molecules because they can pass um, through the cell membrane into the cell um, being absorbed by the cell. So the next, the next word we talk, tiny molecules, because they're tiny, they're absorbed. Once they're absorbed, they act as an on-off switch. Right, so once that molecule is absorbed, that flips the switch on in the cell, for example. Once that switch is on, that signal begins to be sent to the cells around it. And then those cells signal to the cells around them. And you guys can see where I'm going with this. You see the domino or cascading effect throughout the cells in the body. And so what happens is you create this, this cap, excuse me, this cascade or domino effect that is upregulating or increasing the amount of communication that the cells have with each other. And that has a variety of benefits, but it's this cell signaling cascade or domino effect that contributes to our stress resilience and our overall wellness. So again, here are the signaling keywords, or the cell signaling keywords and concepts. So I'm gonna go through this one more time for you. Um, these are the words that you wanna take away from this presentation. We've gone pretty deep here um, and that's great, um, 
but we are worried about that here at the Redox Center so that you don't have to. The, the, the part of this that I want you guys to see are these concepts here. So let's go through them one more time. Cell signaling molecules are tiny molecules. And because they are tiny, they can be absorbed directly into the cell. Once they are absorbed, they act as an on-off switch, turning on cell signaling. Once that cell signals another cell, that cell begins to signal the next, and that cell begins to signal the next, beginning a cascade or domino effect. And it's that cascade or domino effect that contributes to our resilience to stress and overall wellness.